I'm calling to order this meeting. This is a regular meeting of the Committee of the Whole of the Council of the District of Columbia. I am Phil Mendelson, Chairman of the Council and Chair of the Committee of the Whole. Today is Tuesday, March 21st, 2023. The time is 11.37 in the morning, and this meeting is being conducted in the Council Chambers, Room 500 of the Johnny Wilson Building, but it's also what we call a hybrid meeting with a number of members participating virtually. This meeting is available to the public live via the Zoom video conference broadcast platform. Also, I believe it's live on Council Channel 13, and it is, if not live, it will be available on the Council's website, which is www.dccouncil.gov. The, this is a regular meeting of the Committee of the Whole, and uh, we do not have a legislative meeting following. I know that that's hard on members, but actually good on staff. So um, we begin our Committee of the Whole meetings with uh, the roll call to see if we have a quorum. Mr. Cash, would you call the roll? Chairman Mendelson. Present. Councilmember Allen. Here. Councilmember Bonds. Councilmember Bonds. Councilmember Fruman. Present. Councilmember Gray. Here. Councilmember Henderson. Here. Councilmember Lewis George. Here. Councilmember McDuffie. Here. Councilmember Nadeau. Here. Councilmember Parker. Here. Councilmember Pinto. Present. Councilmember Robert White. Present. Councilmember Trayon White. Present. Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum. Thank you, Mr. Cash. Uh, we have, I believe we have a secretary's report. Um, and I'm going to recognize the Chair Pro Tem, Councilmember Kenyon McDuffie. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to move to waive the reading of the Secretary's report. In a motion to waive the reading of the report. Is there discussion on the motion? By voice vote in favor of waiving the reading. All those say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it unanimously. We have the reading of the Secretary's log of introductions and referrals. I'll again recognize the Chair Pro Tem. Mr. McDuffie. And I move to waive the reading of the Secretary's log of introductions and referrals. Is there a motion to waive the reading of the log? Uh, is there discussion? All those in favor of the motion to waive the reading say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? The ayes have it unanimously. We have three measures for markup in the Committee of the Whole. Uh, the first is Bill 25-27, entitled the Devon T. McNeil III Way Designation Act of 2023. This bill would symbolically designate the 1400 block of Cedar Street Southeast as Devon T. McNeil III Way. Uh, a symbolic naming is for ceremonial purposes and shall be in addition to and subordinate to any name that is an official name. On July 4th, 2020, Crystal McNeil, held an anti-violence themed barbecue on the cul-de-sac near her apartment building. Around 9.15 in the evening, her 11-year-old son, Devon McNeil III, was dropped off in front of the apartment to join his mother after spending the day in Ocean City, Maryland. At the same time, four men who knew the McNeils began randomly firing shots at what they wrongly thought was a gunman in their neighborhood. This is according to prosecutors. Devon McNeil was headed toward his aunt's apartment when he was struck by a bullet fired by one of the men and died almost immediately. This senseless act of violence took Devon's life. Uh, it sparked outrage and sadness in the community and beyond. In the wake of his death in April 2021, Mary Grace Rook, a magistrate judge for the Superior Court and her husband Al Rook, worked with the McNeil family to establish a Devon McNeil Memorial Fund at the Greater Washington Community Foundation. The fund aims to give at-risk youths in Ward 7 and 8 an opportunity to break the cycle of violence through social programs in sports, the arts, and education. It is hoped that the fund will help to increase awareness about community violence, especially in those neighborhoods east of the river. Memorializing Devon McNeil III on the street where he was senselessly killed will serve as a reminder of the importance of curbing gun violence in the community. Thus, Assuming that the committee approves this, the committee of the whole recommends council approval of Bill 25 27, the Devon T. McNeil III Way Designation Act of 2023. This legislation was originally introduced last October, October 14th, 
as Bill 24-1058 introduced by Councilmember Trayon White and seven council members. The committee of the whole held a hearing on the measure on December 12, 2022. On January 11th of this year, Bill 25-27, which is before us now, was introduced by Councilmember Trayon White and eight council members. Essentially the same as the bill that which on which we had the hearing in December. The committee has received no testimony or comments in opposition to this legislation. If there's no objection, I move both the print and report with leave for staff to make technical conforming and editorial changes. Is there a discussion? Mr. Cash, would you call the roll? The vote is on both the print and report with leave for staff. Councilmember Bonds. Councilmember Bonds, Councilmember Fruman. Yes. Councilmember Fruman votes yes. Councilmember Gray. Yes. Councilmember Gray votes yes. Councilmember Henderson. Yes. Councilmember Henderson votes yes. Councilmember Lewis George. Yes. Councilmember Lewis George votes yes. Councilmember McDuffie. Yes. Councilmember McDuffie votes yes. Chairman Mendelson. Yes. Chairman Mendelson votes yes. Councilmember Nadeau. Yes. Councilmember Nadeau votes yes. Councilmember Parker. Yes. Councilmember Parker votes yes. Councilmember Pinto. Yes. Councilmember Pinto votes yes. Councilmember Robert White. Yes. Councilmember Robert White votes yes. Councilmember Trayon White. Yes. Councilmember Trayon White votes yes. Councilmember Allen. Yes. Councilmember Allen votes yes. Mr. Chairman, there are 11 yeses and one absent. All right, there are 12 yeses and one absent. Uh, the print and report are approved unanimously. Uh, Madam General Counsel, is the measure legally and technically sufficient for our consideration? Yes, it is. Mr. Assistant Secretary or Madam Secretary? <laughs> yes, sir, I'm here. <laughs> oh, there you are. Uh, is the record complete? Once the report is filed. Madam Budget Director, does the measure's fiscal impact statement comply with council requirements? Yes, it does. And it has no fiscal impact, correct? correct. Uh, without objection, this measure will be placed on the consent agenda for the April 4th legislative meeting. The next item for markup is Bill 25-81, the Wooten Court Designation Act of 2023. This bill would officially designate the public alley system within square 3562 as Wooten Court North as Wooten Court Northeast. Uh, square 3562 is bounded by 3rd and 4th Streets Northeast and W and V Streets Northeast. Location is in Ward 5. This is an official naming. Official naming typically involves the designation of postal addresses and enables the placement of the primary entrance to residences or offices. Wooten Court is the proposed name for an alley system that will enable the by right redevelopment of an existing storage building uh, redeveloped into an, a single family home in the interior of square 3562. The alley is approximately 30 feet wide. The advisory neighborhood commission in which the proposed designation is located, uh, the ANC worked with the petitioner seeking the designation and at a meeting on November 19th last fall, Members of the public were allowed to ask questions and give comments on the designation. The commission subsequently sent a letter to the committee of the whole formally requesting the designation of Wooten Court. I believe that letter was dated November 28th, 2022. The proposed name is in honor of the Wooten family who were the first African-American family to purchase a home on 4th Street Northeast in the Eckington neighborhood. Paul Wooten, was a community leader who was affectionately known as the mayor of 4th Street. In the 1980s, Mr. Wooten was co-founder of Edgewood COPE, COPE meaning Citizens Organized Patrol Efforts, which I believe was the Orange Hats, an anti-drug and anti-crime patrol group chapter, also known as the uh, Red Hats. Sorry, I was wrong when I said Orange, Red Hats. He served as a block captain of the Red Hats and worked with the 5th District Police, Dist 5th District Police to promote a safe community. Mr. Wooten and his wife, Lila, received numerous awards and recognition for the years of dedicated service by the Edgewood Civic Association, the Fifth District Police, 
and the Fourth District Block Club, as well as the Council of the District of Columbia. Mr. Wooten passed away on July 14th, 2010. Officially designating this alley as Wooten Court Northeast recognizes the legacy of Paul Wooten and his family as community advocates for safe neighborhoods. For these reasons, assuming this is approved by the committee, the Committee of the Whole recommends the approval of Bill 25-81, the Wooten Court Designation Act of 2022. This legislation was introduced October 17th of last year by Councilman McDuffie and three other council members. The Committee of the Whole held a hearing on the measure December 12th, 2022. The bill was reintroduced by Councilman McDuffie and seven council members on January 30th of this year. The reintroduction was essentially the same as the bill on which we had the hearing in December, and the committee has received no testimony or comments in opposition to the designation. If there's no objection. I'll move both the print and report with leave for staff to make technical conforming and editorial changes. Is there discussion? We'll have a roll call vote on both the print and report. Mr. Cash. Councilmember Fruman. Yes. Councilmember Fruman votes yes. Councilmember Gray. Yes. Councilmember Gray votes yes. Councilmember Henderson. Yes. Councilmember Henderson votes yes. Councilmember Lewis George. Yes. Councilmember Lewis George votes yes. Councilmember McDuffie. Yes. Councilmember McDuffie votes yes. Chairman Mendelson. Yes. Chairman Mendelson votes yes. Councilmember Nadeau. Yes. Councilmember Nadeau votes yes. Councilmember Parker. Yes. Councilmember Parker votes yes. Councilmember Pinto. Yes. Councilmember Pinto votes yes. Councilmember Robert White. Yes. Councilmember Robert White votes yes. Councilmember Trayon White. Yes. Councilmember Trayon White votes yes. Councilmember Allen. Yes. Councilmember Allen votes yes. Councilmember Bonds. Councilmember Bonds. Mr. Chairman, there are 12 yeses and one absent. The print and report are approved unanimously. Madam General Counsel, is the measure legally and technically sufficient for our consideration? Yes, it is. Madam Secretary, is the record complete? Once the report is filed. Madam Budget Director, does the measure's fiscal impact statement comply with council requirements? Yes, it does, and funds are sufficient. Thank you. Without objection, this measure will be placed on the consent agenda for the April 4th legislative meeting. The next item for markup is Bill 25-154, entitled the William Dorsey Swan Street Designation Act of 2023. This will be a little bit more interesting. It's renaming Swan Street, Swan Street, but actually after a different swan. Uh, this bill would officially designate Swan Street Northwest in honor of William Dorsey Swan. The location is in Ward 2. This is an official naming, naming which typically involves the designation of postal addresses and enables the placement of primary entrance to residences. According to the January 24th, 1912 congressional record, Swan Street Northwest was named after Thomas Swan. Thomas Swan was born in 1809 in Alexandria, Virginia, and served as the 33rd governor of Maryland from 1866 to 1869. Just have to say that as I read this, I think it's great that we name our streets after Maryland governors. No offense to Maryland. Um, and this bill would change the names. Mr. Thomas Swan eventually moved to Baltimore and became a businessman and then politician. Uh, he had a large role in shaping Maryland post-Civil War reconstruction efforts. William Dorsey Swan was born into slavery in Hancock, Maryland in 1858 as the fifth of 13 children. After the Civil War, the Swan family, having been freed, bought a plot of land in Washington County, Maryland, Washington County, Maryland, to start a farm. William Dorsey Swan was uneducated, as were most other formerly enslaved children, but was expected to work and he became a hotel waiter. However, in 1880, in his early 20s, William moved to the District of Columbia to find work to better support his family. He found work as a janitor at a business college, which enabled him to learn and practice reading and writing in his spare time. William Dorsey Swan was charismatic and won over a number of like-minded male friends during a time when same-sex attraction was very much taboo. Swan soon began hosting secret gatherings called a drag, which may be derived from an antiquated term for a masquerade ball. The guests were all his acquaintances who were formerly enslaved men working as servants to the Washington elite. 
The events featured food and drink, as well as dance and competitions in which, according to reports at the time, the participants wore, and I quote, low neck and short sleeve silk dresses, several of them with trains, and corsets, bustles, long hose and slippers, and everything that goes to make a female's dress complete. Swan started regular LGBTQ plus gatherings. I'm not sure they were called LGBTQ plus in the 1880s, but he started regular LGBTQ plus gatherings by September of 1882, uh, known as the House of Swan. In April 1888, Swan held a drag ball to commemorate his 30th birthday. Uh, and I believe the House of Swan was at 1114 F Street and it was raided by the local police. He was charged with being a suspicious character, which was public code for prostitution and running a house of ill repute. There's no evidence of prostitution at his events. Uh, years later in 1896, Swan was again arrested and convicted of keeping a disorderly house. Again, a euphemism for prostitution. The judge said during sentencing, quote, I would like to send you where you would never again see a man's face and would then like to rid the city of other disreputable persons of the same kind, unquote. Clearly a city less tolerant back then. In response to his latest conviction, Swan petitioned President Grover Cleveland for a presidential pardon. While the president denied issuing a pardon, this episode is one of, if not the first known, to take legal action defending the LGBTQ plus community's right to gather without threat of state or individual violence. William Dorsey Swan retired from the House of Swan by 1900 and returned to Hancock, Maryland, feeling defeated. However, the drags that he founded continued and expanded from the district to other cities across the country. Swan died in 1925 in Hancock, the same year that Harlem's Hamilton Lodge Fraternity Charity Ball was redubbed the Faggots Ball, one of the earliest forms of what became an organized ballroom culture dominated by Black queer attendees and performers. There's no doubt that William Dorsey Swan, the Queen, was instrumental in the birth and expansion of queer safe spaces where LGBTQ plus community members could gather, socialize and protect one another. The houses of modern ballroom culture popularized in modern culture in recent years have maintained the same structures, same structure as the House of Swan. Officially redesignating Swan Street Northwest in honor of William Dorsey Swan is a fitting tribute to the groundbreaking courage of William Dorsey Swan to live his truth at a time when the LGBTQ plus community was forced into the shadows of society. For these reasons, the Committee of the Whole, assuming we approve this, recommends approval of Bill 25-154, the William Dorsey Swan Street Dedication Act of 2022. This legislation was originally introduced by Councilmember Pinto with seven colleagues on November 1st, 2022. The Committee of the Whole held a hearing on December 12th, 2022. The bill was reintroduced by Councilmember Pinto, myself, and nine colleagues on February 28th, 2023. Uh, substantially the same bill. The committee has received no testimony or comments in opposition to this legislation. If there's no objection, I move both the print and report with leave for staff to make technical conforming and editorial changes. Is there discussion? Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Yes, Councilmember Henderson. Um, it's noted that um, the cost for this legislation, it seemed distinct to me because it's sort of outside of the norm. Can you explain what the $30,000 is for? Yeah, there's going to be a uh, plaque that will be installed in a nearby park. And uh, so there's some cost associated with that. Okay. An interpretive sign. Oh, bronze and such. Well, I'm hopeful it's not super fancy. I don't know, 30000 I'm told it'd just be a sign, but you know the, the two stakes is sort of tilted. It's explanatory, um, which is actually kind of a good thing. Yeah, no, I was just in comparison to the others. Correct. Uh, the others are just going to be putting signs up on the street poles. Got it. And this one, of course, because the name, the last name is the same, there won't be a in the street bowls. Okay, thank you. Councilmember Pinto. 
Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman, for moving this bill and for sharing the really important and interesting history of William Dorsey Swan. Um, just wanted to kind of echo what you shared about the street signs that dissimilarly from other um, renamings with just the sign itself, this is meant to share some of the history um, so that the community and visitors can, can learn about it. Um, while I won't repeat uh, all of what Chairman Mendelson spoke about, with the important uh, leadership that William Dorsey Swan led, I do just wanna add that they refer to themselves as the queen of drag and as a black queer Washingtonian and former enslaved person, uh, William Dorsey Swan was a very early pioneer in LGBTQIA plus rights. And like many of our good ideas uh, here, this idea originated from the community directly um, to rename the street. And I'm really looking forward to working with the DuPont Circle neighborhood as the epicenter of much of our LGBTQQIA plus community in determining the best location for this new sign with some of the explanatory history so that as many folks can learn about it, it can become a part of the neighborhood fabric. Um, so I'm looking forward to working with you, Mr. Chairman, your office, the ANC commissioners, and DPR um, on some of those details about the signage. And thank you for moving this bill today. Uh, thank you, Council Member. Uh, further discussion on this? Madam General Counsel's Dimitri. That vote? I'm sorry. Um, we will have a, a roll call vote on the print and report with leave for staff to make technical conforming and editorial changes. Mr. Cash. Councilmember Gray. Yes. Councilmember Gray votes yes. Councilmember Henderson. Yes. Councilmember Henderson votes yes. Councilmember Lewis George. Yes. Councilmember Lewis George votes yes. Councilmember McDuffie. Yes. Councilmember McDuffie votes yes. Chairman Mendelson. Yes. Chairman Mendelson votes yes. Councilmember Nadeau. Yes. Councilmember Nadeau votes yes. Councilmember Parker. Yes. Councilmember Parker votes yes. Councilmember Pinto. Yes. Councilmember Pinto votes yes. Councilmember Robert White. Yes. Councilmember Robert White votes yes. Councilmember Trayon White. Yes. Councilmember Trayon White votes yes. Councilmember Allen. Yes. Councilmember Allen votes yes. Councilmember Bonds. Councilmember Bonds. Councilmember Fruman. Yes. Councilmember Fruman votes yes. Mr. Chairman, there are 12 yeses and one absent. Thank you, Mr. Cash. Bill's approved. If bill and report, excuse me, the print and report are approved unanimously. Madam General Counsel, is the measure legally and technically sufficient for our consideration? Yes, it is. Madam Secretary, is the record complete? Once the report is filed. Madam Budget Director, does the measure's fiscal impact statement comply with council requirements? Uh, yes, it does. As you noted, there is a fiscal impact of approximately $30,000 that will be reflected in the fiscal impact, which will be uh, the statement which will be issued um, later today. And so the uh, print will have to say that it's uh, subject to correct inclusion in the budget and financial plan for that section of the bill. Uh, without objection, this measure will be placed on the consent agenda for the April 4th, 2023 regular legislative meeting. That's going to conclude the items for uh, business at this committee as a whole. We have no measures from other committees. Uh, members reminded that uh, we meet tomorrow morning, I believe at 9 a.m. with the mayor where she will brief us on the budget. I believe tomorrow is when we, the day, day one of our receipt of the budget, assuming that we get the complete budget balanced. And uh, then there will be a briefing on Friday. Committee of the whole will have a hearing where the mayor and I'm assuming the city administrator will present and the CFO, except the CFO doesn't really present the mayor's budget. He's just there to answer questions. The, the briefing will be in this room. Uh, and I believe the format is usually where members get one round with the mayor and then maybe a second round with the city administrator if the mayor doesn't want to stay. Um, and I do want to note for the record that I appreciate that the mayor does present her budget to the council formally that way although the clock starts tomorrow. And then um, we have hearings beginning next week on the budget. And uh, April 4th, as I indicated before, is our next legislative meeting. 
time is 12.02 in the afternoon. Meetings adjourned.